Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of The Porch as we continue our discussion on the gospel according to Isaiah. And I'm coming on Facebook Live as well as Clubhouse this morning. And I know that the Facebook Live does not yet have a title, but I'll put that in after the broadcast. And of course, welcome all of those that are coming in from different rooms in Clubhouse beginning this morning with with Kingdom Citizens United Prophetic Intercession Decrees for Breakthrough and the Assignment Room. Welcome, welcome, welcome all the members of Crusaders Church, all the members of Impact University. Thank you for coming on. And as you get the notification, I'll wait a few minutes and make a few brief announcements, but I want you to share the broadcast, uh, share it on Facebook Live especially, put it on your page, help us get the message out to as many people as possible. And then, of course, also in Clubhouse, by going down to the bottom of the app and hitting the share button. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of today's teaching. Um, I've just traveled from Canada. I was in Toronto ministering this past weekend, so I I don't think I was able to do a broadcast Friday uh, because I was there ministering. Uh, in Toronto in a freedom conference, a deliverance conference. Had a great time there. Great meeting all of those who came to the services. And uh, I'll be letting you know about my upcoming trips to Brooklyn, New York. That's coming up. Um, as a matter of fact, yeah, that's coming up uh, next, not this week, but the following week. I'm coming to Brooklyn, New York to be with Apostle James Duncan and his summer harvest gathering. And then I'm flying back to Los Angeles to be with Sarah, Pastor Sarah Morgan uh, again. For those in the Southern California area, I'll be letting you know when I'm coming back there as well. That'll be the final Sunday of this month, the 25th of June. I'll be there back in, I believe it's going to be back in Gardenia. I'll let you know exactly where I'm coming to and ministering. So Brooklyn, New York, then all the way across the country to Los Angeles, California, um, I'll be ministering. So I want to I want you to pray for me as I travel, as I go to these different places and and minister the word of the Lord. Um, I'm looking forward uh, to being back with James Duncan. Haven't been there in several years since before the pandemic. And I'm back with him and his, his, his church there in Brooklyn, New York. And then, of course, the Night of Wonders. Sunday night, June 25th in Southern California. So if you were in the last one, we had a great, great service there in Southern California and looking forward to another night of wonders with Pastor Sarah Morgan uh, in the Los Angeles, California area. Then we're getting ready to come to London in the in the uh, first half of July. I'll be in London uh, with Francina Norman and her conference there as she does it every year. Back in London ministering, and that'll be the second week of July. And uh, so we have some great, great things coming up, um, trips planned. And uh, thank you for praying for me and being a part of any of those services. Um, We're going to continue our teaching from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 61 this morning. I don't have the title up in, in Facebook, but I do have it up in Clubhouse. And it's called The Gospel According to Isaiah. We've been, we've been going almost chapter by chapter through Isaiah. It's been a phenomenal study. And I'm um, looking at the good news in Isaiah, the good news of Christ and his kingdom, or the good news of the anointed one and his kingdom. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, the anointed one, Christ and his kingdom. That was the good news that Isaiah was prophesying coming to the nation of Israel for their redemption, salvation, deliverance, restoration. And um, it's it's good news. It's the gospel, uh, the power of God unto salvation. So we're going to talk about that some more today. So again, share the broadcast, hit the likes and heart buttons, especially if you're on Facebook, get engaged in the broadcast. That helps get the broadcast out to more people. I need you to help me because Facebook does not do a great job of notifying all of my followers. They, as a matter of fact, they don't. So I need you to help me. Okay. And also I'm going to encourage those uh, who have been supporting what I'm doing in ministry to continue to do so. And I've been challenging as many people as possible to sow for this month, a seed of $60. If you can 
for the month. If you've already done it, I want to thank you for doing that. I appreciate your giving and your sewing. But if you've not had a chance to do it and you want to do it today and partner with what I'm doing around the world in ministry, feel free to do it this week. And you can go to the giving addresses at Cash App JE Global, which stands for John Eckhart Global, and PayPal at paypal.me slash Apostle JE the number one, or PayPal at Apostle JE the number one. You can also zail at E C K H J O H N at gmail.com. Again, that's E C K H J O H N at gmail.com. You can also give to the stars here on Facebook next to the heart and like button. You can also click on the click on the business card in Clubhouse and you see all the giving addresses. And as you sow your seed today, I decree favor, grace, blessing, prosperity, abundance over everyone that is sowing and giving and partnering with me in this ministry. As I always do based on Job twenty-two twenty-eight, 28, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. These are financial decrees, prosperity decrees that I decree over those that are giving and sowing today and those who have sown this month, have sown in the past. And again, I decree Deuteronomy 1, 11, a thousand times more over your finances. Multiplication, increase. Psalms 115, may you increase more and more, you and your children. Isaiah 54 and 3, may you break forth on the right hand and on the left. Proverbs 10, 33, may the blessing of the Lord make rich and God add no sorrow. Philippians 4, 19, may my God supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And then 2 Corinthians 9, 8, may God uh, cause all grace or favor to abound toward you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Psalm 66, 14, may you come into your wealthy place your wealthy place, your wealthy place. Psalms 112 and verse three, may wealth and riches be in your house. <laughs> Haggai 1, 6, no holes in your bags, purse, wallets, or accounts. Uh, I decree Isaiah 48, 17, that God will teach you to profit and lead you by the way that you should go. Proverbs 13, 33, may the wealth of the sinner find its way into your hands. Um, Deuteronomy 8 and 17, may the Lord give you power to get wealth, power, ability, grace, strength to get wealth. May that be your portion even this month as you're sowing and you're giving. I decree supernatural growth, miracle growth in your finances. Let June be a month of miracles, a month of breakthroughs, a quantum month for you. May you go to another level. May you increase, increase, increase. May you be fat and flourishing. May you flourish like the palm tree, according to Psalms, 80, uh, uh, Psalms 89. May you be satisfied in the days of famine, Psalms 37. May God take pleasure in your prosperity, Psalms 35. And may whatever you do prosper, Psalms number one. And may God send prosperity now, Psalms 118. I decree these verses, these scriptures over you as you sow and as you give. And don't forget the giving addresses. Cash App JE Global. You can also give through Venmo at that address and PayPal at Apostle JE, the number one. Now, remember, these are the only addresses I use for giving. If someone is inboxing you or contacting you another way, that is not me. So please do not send money other ways by those who inbox you, message you, say they have a word for you. And if you send it this way, that is not me. I don't know how many people that have, have, there, there's quite a bit of that going on with ministries, people impersonating a ministry, even fake pages. But you see me here or you hear my voice and I give you the giving addresses to give. Please do not be taken advantage of by those who are who are um, scamming. OK, this is said bluntly by scammers. But I believe that God will prosper you. Bless you as we decree walk in faith, decree these things yourself. Believe God that your seed is being multiplied. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. God will multiply your seed sown. Multiplication. It's a biblical principle. It's in the word of God. I know some people fight against it, don't believe in it, but it is scriptural and you can, you can trust and stand on the word of God. 
So thank you so much for those who are giving and sowing today. Again, if you can sow a seed with of $60 for this um, six month that we're um, in now, or just if you can't give that much, give your best seed today and let these decrees continue to bless you, prosper you and release God's favor, God's grace and God's prosperity upon your life. Well, I want to thank all of those who took the last webinar last Thursday. We got so many testimonies from people who were blessed by the teaching on false ministry, the demon of seduction. And we're going to be doing another one in a few weeks. We'll let you know about that. If you've already registered for the first webinar, that one will be free of charge for you. And, and, and if you've not yet registered, you can still do it today and watch the replay and get ready for the next one. I would encourage you to do so. And you just simply have to go to the website, jeglobal.com. J I'm sorry, jebiblestudy.com. Please forgive me, jebiblestudy.com. You can still sign up for it and you'll get the replay. And if you did register for the first one and missed it, you can watch the replay. Okay, it's on exposing false ministry. I give the fruit, the signs, the scriptural uh, signs of a false ministry, how to avoid it, how to be delivered from it. I prayed, I prophesied. Uh, I believe it was a good, good message and so many people were blessed by the teaching. We're gonna continue in that vein for a couple of more webinars and I want you to be a part of it. It's a part of our ongoing webinar series. The second series we're doing, the first one cast out. Uh, many were blessed by that, the demon of shame, the demon of selfishness, and deliverance of, in the belly. This one is a new series, False Ministry, Witchcraft, Control, Domination, Manipulation, dis Seduction, Deception, that can operate through religion, that can operate through religion, cults, controlling churches, that's what we're talking about, not only identifying it, but how to be delivered from it. If you've been a victim of that, you may or you probably do need deliverance because there's spirits and demons connect with that. So go to jebiblestudy.com and sign up today and then get ready for the next one we're doing in a few weeks. We'll, we'll let you know the title of it and the exact date. Um, this week, we'll, we'll, we'll have that information for you. But thank all of those who are part of our ongoing series. I really, really do appreciate your participation. And I want to thank Sandy Norman as well uh, for, for ministering at our service Saturday at Crusaders Church. I haven't spoken with her yet, but I, I just knew it was a great, great service. Thank you so much, Sandy Norman. I'll be there this Saturday at 2 p.m. at 3821 South Michigan. I'll be back in service 2 p.m. Uh, Saturday edition of Crusaders Church at 3821 South Michigan, so let the members of Crusaders Church know. Okay, before I start, again, if you're on Facebook, please share the broadcast, Hit it, put it on your page, help me get the numbers up, and of course, those in Clubhouse as well, hit the share button at the bottom of the app, and let's read our scriptures from Isaiah 61, very familiar verses of scripture, probably some of the most familiar verses in Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is uh, the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Now, here we go. The gospel according to Isaiah. Good tidings or glad tidings is the gospel. So we see within Isaiah the mentioning of the gospel. The book of Isaiah is a prophetic book about the coming gospel that would bring salvation to the world. God has anointed him to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, or the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God. We talked about that in Isaiah 59, that God would come with vengeance because of the righteous blood shed by the wicked from, from Abel all the way throughout the Old Testament. And uh, to, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Well, those are three amazing verses that talk about 
Christ. The word Christ, by the way, actually means the anointed one. Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one. So Isaiah is prophesying about the coming Messiah. It's, it's, the, it's the phrase that represents Israel's Messiah, the deliverer, the savior, the anointed one, the man, the servant that will be anointed by the spirit of God to bring salvation to Israel and bring salvation to the world. That's what this verse is referring to. The one that will be anointed by the spirit of God for the task of setting people free, setting the nation free. And this is the purpose of the anointing. Now we know in Luke 4 that Jesus, uh, when that this scripture was read, Jesus actually read this verse in the synagogue and said, this day is this scripture um, fulfilled in your eyes. And of course, they, they, ran up, they ran him out of town because he was claiming to be the Messiah. He was claiming to be the Savior. And many could not believe that this one would be the Savior. And they forced him to leave town. Uh, but he was anointed by the Spirit of God. Now, the anointing is, we talk about the anointing quite a bit in the church. It's God's empowerment. It's God's grace. It's God's ability. It's God's gifting. Uh, there are different kinds of anointings, apostolic anointings, prophetic, evangelistic, pastoral teachings, anointings for miracles, for healings, for preaching, for singing, different graces, different anointings that can come on individuals. But there was only one man anointed to bring salvation to the world and that was Jesus, that was Emmanuel, that was God with us. The only one, we can all be anointed. We can all share in some anointing that God gives us, but he was the anointed one. He was the Christ. Now there can be false Christ, but only one Christ, Jesus the Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ. Now there's a verse I want to uh, talk about that connects with this verse. It's Acts 10, 38, one of my favorite verses it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So we see that the anointing was with, with, with the Holy Ghost and power. The Holy Ghost and power was the ability of the equipment God gave him. Look at, look at this now to minister healing and bring deliverance to those who were oppressed, to heal all that were oppressed of the devil. So this anointing that we see in Isaiah 61 was for the purpose of liberating mankind from the oppression of darkness, from the oppression of demons, from the oppression of the devil, which is why we see Jesus doing no miracle until the spirit of God came upon him after John's baptism and coming out of the wilderness, Jesus did his first miracle after that. He did not do any miracles from the age of birth until he was 30. No miracles. No, no, no empowerment to do this until the Spirit of God came upon him at the baptism of John. He was anointed by the Spirit of God with the Holy Ghost and with power to liberate people from the oppression of darkness. Now we know in Acts, I'm sorry, Isaiah 10:27 that the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. One of my favorite verses, Isaiah 10, 27, the yoke shall be, be destroyed because of the anointing. So the anointing is the ability to break yokes. Yoke is a symbol of bondage. Uh, yoke is a symbol of slavery. Yoke is a symbol of oppression. And so the purpose of the anointing is to lift burdens and to destroy yokes, to take people or to free people from oppression. It brings deliverance. He was anointed to preach deliverance to the captives, to heal the brokenhearted, to release people from mourning, from sadness, from defeat, from oppression, from sickness, from infirmity, from demons, from the control of darkness. This is the purpose of the anointing. It's still the same purpose today. When God anoints people, he anoints them to bring deliverance, to bring uh, rescue, uh, to bring healing to deliver people from the oppression of darkness, whether it's anointed preaching, anointed teaching, anointed singing, anointed worship, anointed prophesying, uh, whatever. whenever there's an anointing, people are set free. People are released from bondage and from yokes. And this is why Satan hates the anointed one. He hated Christ and he hates the anointing. 
because it is the one thing that separates people. Now, we have many people in the Old Testament that were anointed, and many in the New Testament that were anointed. Kings were anointed, judges were anointed, the priests were anointed, anointed for a particular service, for a particular mandate, a particular assignment. God would anoint people. The Spirit of God would come upon them. We know David was, was anointed. We know Moses was anointed by God. The anointing is what separates separates men and women for a particular service, a particular office. So this anointing that came upon Christ separated him for the work of salvation and the work of healing and the work of deliverance. And it's what, it's what liberated us. We are free today because of the anointed one and his anointing, because of Jesus Christ. He is the one that frees us, that, set, that delivers us, that rescues us, from demons, from oppression, from possession, from whatever uh, the enemy tries to put on you, burdens, heaviness. Uh, when you go to an anointed service, there's anointed worship, there's a release, people are set free, there's liberty. Notice he gives you the oil of joy. Joy replaces sadness, the garment of praise. Praise is the result of deliverance and healing and restoration, freedom, liberty. These are all the things that happen uh, as a result of God's anointing and the anointed one. So it's, it's one of the most important subjects in scripture when it comes to the anointing and the spirit of God. Without the anointing, we're not equipped to bring deliverance and healing. We have to have anointed preaching, preaching with power. His word was with power, preaching with power, demonstration of the spirit of God. That's anointed preaching, anointed singing, anointed um, um laying on of hands, healing, deliverance, all done by the anointing. It's the power of God that comes upon us and the power of God that is within us that brings liberty and freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is a liberty. Or where the anointing is, there is liberty. Now, sometimes we actually use anointing oil that represents the anointing. When we pray for the sick, we anoint people with oil. We lay hands on people. We actually use uh, physical oil that is a symbol of the anointing. Uh, of, of the work of the Spirit of God, but it is God's power. Uh, it is God's uh, ability that liberates people and brings joy, happiness, freedom, healing, rescue to those that are in bondage. It gives beauty for ashes. Ashes in Israel was a symbol of defeat, sadness, and mourning. The condition of Israel when Christ came was one of defeat, sadness, and mourning because they were under the oppression of darkness, under sin and death, under sickness and disease, under demon possession. But Jesus came to break it. Jesus came to liberate. So as you, as you read the gospel, the gospels, you see that you see all these miracles and healings and breakthroughs that happen as a result of Christ. Wherever he went, people were set free, healed, delivered, raised from the dead. Demons were cast out. The oppressed were released as a result of the Spirit of God that was upon him, as a result of his preaching, his teaching, and his ministry, Christ, Jesus, the Christ, Jesus, the anointed one, Jesus, the Messiah. And again, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and, 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 and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the Spirit of God. Thank God for Christ and his anointing. So Isaiah 61 is one of the most important verses in Isaiah that's fulfilled in Isaiah, uh, Luke chapter 4, rather, uh, when, when Jesus refers it as the fulfillment of him, as Messiah, as Christ, as the anointed one. It is one of the most powerful verses in the book of Zion. The good news, Israel, that your Messiah is coming. The good news that your Savior is coming. The good news that your Deliverer is coming. The good news that your healer is coming. The good news that the one that you need to set you free from oppression is coming. And now the good news is that he has come. And by believing in him, you can be set free and you can be released from any captivity, any bondage in your life. Wow. What an amazing book. This, this Isaiah, we call it the gospel according to Isaiah because the gospel, the good news is really in Isaiah, the good news of salvation, redemption that would come to Israel and then go to the whole world. Again, Isaiah is sometimes called the fifth evangelist. 
Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then the, the Old Testament book of Isaiah. He's the evangelical prophet. And I also believe that he's a good example of prophets should also evangelize. Prophets should do more than prophesy. They should also evangelize and win the loss. That's important for prophets to do uh, because the prophetic will, uh, the anointing in any form upon you will cause people to repent, be convicted, and come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Well, thank you so much. Don't forget, if you're blessed by the teaching this series, go to the giving addresses, Cash App at JE Global, which stands for John Eckhart Global, and PayPal at uh, Apostle J.E., the number one, and sow your seed today in what we're doing around uh, the world. I appreciate it so much. And again, I decree favor, grace, blessing. Remember, I'm decreeing June to be a month of miracle growth over your finances, acceleration, increase, multiplication, and miracle growth over your finances. Let you enjoy a great harvest. Um, when I come to New York, the title of the conference is Summer Harvest. Um, I, I thought that was interesting in this month of June. We're talking about summer harvest uh, there in New York, in Brooklyn. I'll be there on the 23rd of June, the 23rd of June. So if you're in Brooklyn, in the New York area, and want to join me, uh, the, the flyers, we'll put them in the chat. And it's on my Facebook Live page as well. There with um, James Duncan, I believe Michelle McLean Waters will be speaking um, and, 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 uh, and others as well. But I'll be ministering on the 23rd of June. And then the 25th of June, back to Southern California to be with Pastor Sarah Morgan and the Night of Wonders in the Los Angeles area. We'll also put that flyer up and invite you to come and be a part of that service. If you missed the last one or if you were there, come for another Night of Wonders. We're believing God for wonders and miracles on that night in Southern California. Well, thank you so much for coming on, for giving, for sowing. And um, as always, until you hear from me again, God bless you. Those on Facebook Live, thank you for sharing the broadcast. God bless you and double shalom. God bless.